everyone, welcome to another R tutorial video, the 19th uh, video in this series. Today I'm going to continue analyzing the MBA data set that I introduced in the previous video. Because I'm going to be using this data set so much, I've decided to uh, adopt some conventions just so that you know the process of you know, loading the data uh, and saving the data uh, goes a lot faster. Um, you know, if I make you know several of these videos, uh, you know, it, it's going to get a little bit boring and redundant, and, and I'm sure you guys know by now how to import data and how to save data, uh, especially after that last video. So here's, uh, here's the th conventions I'm going to adopt. Uh, I'm going to type it out this one time, but next, next video and subsequent videos, I'm just going to leave it up on here. Uh, I'm going to already have these lines written. I'm going to run them and without any comment, just so that we can really dig into the uh, learning the new stuff. So I'm going to always set the working directory, and I have a working directory set here, uh, and I'm always going to use uh, this one for for this particular uh, for this particular series. Before I go any further, let me make sure I typed it in right. Yes, looks like uh, I didn't read an error or anything like that. Also, I'm always going to uh, read the data in. And I'm going to have a file in here. Okay, looks okay. And I'm also also always going to write results. when I'm all done. Okay, give myself some space. Uh, okay, so uh, by the way, I should mention now, uh, what I'm going to, what I plan on doing is every time I create a data set and save it uh, or use a data set, I'm always going to provide links in the comments below. If I ever forget or if a link is broken, uh, please, uh, you know, uh, leave a comment. Let me know. I'll uh, I'll fix it as soon as soon as uh, I uh, as soon as I can and as soon as I realize what the problem is. But uh, but let me know if I happen to forget or something like that. Uh, okay. So so ne just uh, remember next time I'm not going to go through all these steps. I'm already going to have these lines up here. Uh, I'm going to run them without any comment, and I'm really just going to dig into the to the new stuff. Okay. So this data set. Um, that I'm using. It has all the information that I need, but the format is a little bit messy. It's not quite, uh, it's not quite in the format that I need uh, in order to perform the, the uh, kind of analysis that I want to do. And actually, this is a very common problem in analytics. Uh, very often, the data that you need is out there, uh, and somebody's providing it uh, for you. It's just not in the format that you need. Um, it could, and it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, whoever stored the data is doing a bad job. They just might not realize the kind of analysis that you that you want to do. Uh, generally speaking, you know, if you do some sort of you know creative analysis or something like that, chances are the data that somebody is giving you, uh, it's not going to be in the uh, correct format. You're just going to have to come up with a creative way to to get it in the format that you want. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna uh, you know. I'll leave it at that. Just kind of realize that there's a lot of the work in analytics is taking the, the, the information that you get and, and manipulating it and getting it in the form that you want. So this is a really real part of, of data analytics. Okay, so let's remind ourselves what this data set looks like uh, by using the head function. And in particular, I want to focus on the game ID field. It's that very first field there. And notice those first eight characters, they actually contain date information. The first four characters are the year, 2012. The next two characters are the month, October. And the, 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 the next two are the day uh, of the month, in this case, the 30th. Okay, so it's great that that, uh, that field has date information. What's unfortunate is that it's not in a very convenient format. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to change it into a, a date object in R 
and R has some built-in functionality that, uh, that handles dates uh, uh, very well. At the very least, uh, much better than, you know, straight up, you know, text, uh, uh, than a straight up text variable. Okay, so I'm going to start. Now, notice that uh, I only need those first eight characters. So I'm going to start off with a substring function. And uh, first is the vector that I want to substring. Next is the number of characters that I want to grab. And let's go ahead and run this. Uh, whoops, uh, looks like I, I made a typo. I typed UD instead of ID. Let's run it. And uh, it cut me off because I, I was running the, um, I was running that, that, that vector that I created, you know, was for the entire data set. But let's look at the last few of those entries there. We can see that we are grabbing those eight characters that I wanted. So that substring character is grabbing those correct, the, you know, the information that we wanted to grab, but it's still not converted into a date object. That's what we're going to do in the next step here. So once I grab that vector uh, with all those, uh, with all that data information in there, I'm going to have to convert it into a date variable. There is a built-in function in R called the asDate function. Now before I go too much more into the asDate function, um, just keep in mind that date information uh, is a little bit of a tricky subject because there are so many ways to store date information. Uh, just think about it. Looking at this variable, you know, I did uh, what the the way that the information was stored was year, month uh, as a number, and uh, day as in like uh, you know the day of the uh, uh, the day of the month. But the, uh, a lot of other ways to you know sort dates is you know maybe month first, then day, and then uh, year with dashes in between, or maybe day, then month, then year with slashes in between, and so many other ways that I that I'm just not going to go into. Uh, but because there's so many different ways to write dates, uh, there's just uh, you have to be aware of you know how to handle all those different situations. Because of that, I highly recommend that you read the documentation that is under, uh, and let me, uh, I'm going to type it down here in the console. Uh, actually, uh, let me type it up in, uh, in the source. Uh, it's strp time. And you can see that documentation uh, popped up on the right hand side. If you're working with a data set with dates, I highly recommend reading through this, uh, or at least being aware that it exists, so you can refer back to it later, so you uh, so you understand how to handle uh, uh, these text objects with date information in there. Now, the first object, uh, the first uh, argument in this as date function, is the uh, is a vector with uh, character with uh, with uh, with text that contains the data information. The next part is a, uh, it's a rep representation of how the data information is stored. And let me type it, uh, type out that representation and I'll talk through it and I think it'll be a little bit more clear once I type it out. Okay, so let's look from left to, to right in the second argument, what is in there? There is a percent sign, capital Y, percent sign, capital, uh, sorry, lowercase m, percent sign, lowercase d. What that means is it's going to have a, a four-digit year, a two-digit month, and a two-digit day. The capital Y means four-digit year, lowercase m means two-digit month, lowercase d means two-digit day. With no slashes and no dashes, that is the way that my data information is stored in my text variable. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you're working with a different data set with, uh, with dates stored a different way, read that strp time uh, documentation and it'll tell you how to, how to handle most of the situations. Okay, so I'm going to run this variable, uh, sorry, run this, uh, run this line and see what I get. And 
uh, it cut me off again, but notice that it's uh, it reformatted the date. Um, and it looks like it text variable, but it's not. It actually converted, it changed that to a date variable. And, uh, and the way to see that is, let's say I did class and run this function here on this. You can see that it's a date rather than a uh, rather than text. So that class function tells you what uh, what what type of variable it is, and uh, I've actually have converted it to a date. So I'm going to store this in my data set. Whoops! Uh, wow, I don't know what I was typing there, uh, but I'll I'll pause here for a minute, and you can see. I'm going to create a game date variable, and I'm going to store in that game date variable, uh, in that in my data frame, uh, all that data information that I just created. I'm going to run that now, and let's run the head function again, and look at that last line. And there we can see the game date information there. Uh, I'm going to end my video here for now, and I'm going to to save the the data set that I just created. Uh, so I can, whoops, so I can use it later. Now notice I made a mistake here. I should have did all underscore DF. I just had DF uh, as my data frame. I'm going to run it again, uh, and there we go. Uh, so I saved my results. Uh, so uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, but next video, I'm going to pick it off, pick it up right, off, right where I started last time and continue cleaning up this uh, data set. And then after that, we can really dig into uh, analyzing this data. So uh, uh, hope that helps you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.